Honorable Temba Mliswa. In fact, uh, it's actually Temba Peter Mliswa. Temba meaning trust and Peter the rock in the Bible. And of course, Mliswa is what it is. That's me, MP for uh, Norton constituency, in brackets, independent, and the only independent legislator in the House of Assembly. I'm not a career politician, I'm a sports person by profession, but I decided to be in politics because I realized that we needed to have progressive change. And in progressive change, you need to have progressive people. I wanted to do this mainly for sport because at the time I felt that we needed somebody who would then take sport to the next level. First of all, our identity as a people, who are we as Zimbabweans? Why are we shy not to say who we are? Okay, we have a culture, tradition and heritage. Are we going by it? And so I also wanted to ensure that the country is governed well according to the laws, to the rules, to the acts, which is best practice in terms of corporate governance at the end of the day. I believe every generation has got that mandate to represent itself, to be able to dictate its future or else others will dictate the future for you. The politics that we must talk about is politics of development, inclusivity and again a one Zimbabwe, the best thing for Zimbabwe. You've got to understand one thing, and today let me speak this out. The politicians that you have are coming from the people. They've not been planted there by anybody in parliament. They've come from the people. So what I'm saying to you, when the economy is tough and there's inflation, inflation does not skip and say, no, this one did not vote, and we'll go to this one who voted. You are all part of it. You are one total package. So participation of the electorate, of the citizen, is important. How many people understand the Constitution? You see people on social media, they talk to nothing about constitutionalism. America, they swear to the Constitution. We Zimbabweans must swear to the Constitution. Once you you swear to the constitution, then you're patriotic, you're national. Don't swear to the, to the constitution of your political party. Swear to the constitution of the country. Five years that you give to a person, to a mandate to represent you is serious. They either make it or break it for you. Don't look at the political party. Look at the capacity that somebody has. Look at national interests being driven. I want the nation to be to follow the dictates of the constitution. And in following the dictates of the constitution, we as legislators must have oversight. Do people understand the power of parliament? Do people understand the three pillars of the state, judiciary, parliament and the executive who is more superior and so forth that's why i lobby for the remuneration of the parliament to be to be up to it according to the standards in the SADC, we are the worst. So how then do we represent people when we are compromised? We must be the hope for the people. But in being the hope for the people, may the people also give us hope by electing people who will show and drive that hope. The women say we must be empowered. The constitution empowers them to be 50-50. What are they doing to fight for what's in the constitution already? We have a tendency of wanting to put more and more clauses and sections in the constitution when the existing ones have not been implemented. Zimbabweans are well educated but not well read. There is a difference between being well read and being well educated. Mbuya Warikumusha is well read than Munakatsitsa. And being well read is different from being educated. There are people who are able to go through the university of life. And the university of life is you experiencing certain things, you being practical at the end of the day. That person who's going through the university of life becomes a sponge where they are now borrowing and they are learning from, from the academia. The academia is not prepared to do business, but is there to do your business better, is better to develop you and so forth. We must be well read, we must be practical, we must be on the ground. That's the reason why for me, social media for me is to inform people. It's not to work, it's to tell you the work I've done. Be on the ground with the people, be humble, win the people's hearts. It's, it's a heart to heart issue. Representing people is not about nothing, but your heart is a call from God. The same way the teachers and the doctors are able to do that, the, the, the civil servants. It's a call from God, but when you do it from your heart, when you're passionate about it, you enjoy it better. You know, you cannot make me a legislator when I don't have a house, when I don't have a car. The first thing I want is a house and a car. This is where corruption comes in at the end of the day. It's sad for me. You know, for a country which is high in terms of literacy, but you're not able to find yourselves, it's a curse on its own. The government must be able to have the mantra, 
Zimbabwe is open for Zimbabwean business. We are getting more foreigners coming in, displacing us and so forth. That does not go well with the culture, tradition, even with the spirit mediums of this country, even the founding principles of the struggle. Zimbabwe is open for business for Zimbabweans, which means that whoever wants to invest in this country, they've got a Zimbabwean businessman who is in the front because we know our country, we know our territory, but the foreign people now know more of our territory. You can't do that in China, you can't do that in America, you cannot do that in anything. So why are we so 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 lenient? Why, why are we so liberal to a point where we lose Ubuntu, we lose our, our ancestors land because of business we cannot do that we are a nation of tradition culture and heritage and that we must be guided by at the end of the day you look at how this country was liberated by young people if you look and we read Joyce Mjuru was a minister at the age of 21 at that age at 21 you're complaining you're still wanting to be taken care of why are you not inspired by that list of ministers the current president it can only motivate you it can only inspire you to be able to be able to then take this country forward those are the founding principles of the struggle that we talk about which we all must sign to and once you sign to them patriotism and nationalism becomes key and national issues first before anything else zimbabwe first zimbabwe first zimbabwe first god bless zimbabwe may we go back to the 17th of november okay two days ago that was very important 2017 it ushered a new era where there was goodwill, where Zimbabwe said, let's start again, let's start again, let's, set, let's press the reset button. After that, was there inclusivity, the same inclusivity which was there in ushering the new Zimbabwe was not there. This is where it was missed, he has to go back to that because people feel betrayed. They are the same people who brought him back into power after his own partisan PF had kicked him out. Then there was a revolutionary march, a revolutionary march, which had no blood. The army had to be on the side of the people because it is the people's army. What we wanted was a new Zimbabwe and we must ask ourselves honestly and this is where I expect the president to listen to everyone. Is this where we want it to be? If we are not there, what are the challenges? What are the success? There are more people who vote for him who are not in ZANU PF. Don't see me as opposition. Don't see opposition as opposition. No, see them as Zimbabweans who are wanting better. Because without competition at the end of the day, what does it mean? The, the opposition is supposed to be the government in waiting what are you doing as a, as a government in waiting and so forth let's not waste the resources going to parliament a walk out of parliament and so forth be part of the system in being able to push for the reforms that we want let's not create and let's not keep flagging people or painting them with the wrong brush gamma talks lacoste g40 was zanu pf not, let not the next president saying, oh, you were for ED, not for me. No, 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 no. We are planting the wrong seed. And the legacy which is left is detrimental to this country. It's difficult to heal. It's difficult to heal. And there will be a transition which we all will not understand. We love our elders. We love those who fought for this country. We love this nation. We love each other as a people. May we embrace that genuinely and sincerely. But it starts from leadership. Do people know that it's from Gamma? Do people know that is from Shurugu? But what have they done in that area in terms of the school or his farm or the village where he comes from? Where is the stage of Tongo Gara in Shurugu? Where is the stage of Tongo Gara in Gamu? Where is the stage of Tongo Gara at the school that's named after Tongo Gara? We must be proud with Bute, that's what we have. At the same time, people were saying, but Bute Mshonga, but during COVID, they were buying it and using it for steam. <laughs> Let's be proud of who we are. Let's be, be proud of our culture, heritage. There is no party in the world which has the monopoly of running the country. While you are the ruling party, the governing party, it does not give you the license to the monopoly of ideas of turning around the country. You then carry everybody with you and then you are then called a great party for the people. You are then elected every election because people see that you are more for the country than for your party. Today, if, you are, if there's land, Okay, and it's being given. Government's job is to provide affordable housing, land and so forth. But if you go there wearing a 
political party jacket, you will not get. Look at the people in the opposition, how they missed out from the land reform. Look at how they missed out from the indigenization. ZANU PF, yes, bring the party to say, but this is our program. Thank you so much for the program, ZANU PF, but I would like it and so forth. Wearing a t shirt here, ZANU PF named DC, does not change what's in your heart at the end of the day. Mgwadi Tafazwa is yard, Joanna Mamumbe is yard, Ostalos is yard, Seningam is yard. All these brilliant youth people, I brought them together wearing different t shirts and said the t shirt means nothing. Wear the t shirt of your choice, but know that you are one. You cannot be used to fight each other as youth people and so forth. Victor Hugo says one thing open quote, there's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. Close quote. That's open for everybody. So to me, it starts with the young people. That's why we, in Yard, we believe in commanders. Every young person is a commander. Let's have laws that protect the resources of the people. China, you go there, you cannot get a passport. But Chinese have passports here. And yet you cannot get a Chinese passport. How is that? Can I tell you the title deed in the rural area? It's your grave. Makuana Sekuru, Ematete Guru, Guaraku, your title deed. We respect that. Now, if we don't respect Makua and Taito did how are we going to be respected? The government must be very clear in terms of policy. Policy inconsistency is critical. One minute we want to be the Americans, we want to be the Western world, but at the same time you're saying they are hard on sanctions and so forth. Let's allow the Zimbabweans in America to talk to the Americans in America. Let's allow the British to talk to the British. They too lobby for us, but they can only do that when there's harmony, when there's peace, when we're sitting together, when there's inclusivity. Gukura Hundi, it's a of saying sorry it happened it was not supposed to happen whether i was in it or not it was a bad act sorry it was not supposed to happen i might have been in the government myself being a leader at the time but in retrospect it was bad we're not supposed to kill anybody we just come from the struggle we apologize we are sorry that will build the country